great. It's great. And, and hi, everyone. My name is Shalini Upu. I am director of admission here at Reed College. And it's such a delight to be with you all again this afternoon or, or evening, depending on, on, on where y'all are, uh, which we will soon learn. Um, and so thank you also to, uh, to Carla for joining us as well. And uh, we are, so just a quick note on um, logistics going forward. So right now, go ahead and chat to everybody, you know, your name, where you're coming from. Uh, and if you have a question throughout the course of the session, go ahead and if you wouldn't mind, directly chat that to me. Uh, and then I'll make sure it gets to, to the, the, the appropriate person to get that answered for you. Um, so if you wouldn't mind doing that, that'd be great. I also just want to share a, a very, a welcome to everyone, but a very special congratulations to any admitted students in here. Are there any admitted students uh, joining us? This, oh, all right. Hello. <laughs> awesome. Congra yes, yes. Congra a hearty, hearty congratulations. And, uh, and although, of course, we would have love to have celebrated with you in person uh, we are going to do our absolute best to give you a sense a glimpse into the kind of intellectual community and also residential community uh, that we are here at reed from from the comfort of of your living rooms so um without further ado all right great some chats coming in here without further ado i'll turn it over to the star of the show show here um, thank you carla again yeah, and thank you all for introducing yourself on the chat. I'm just really, it's great to read about all the things that you've been doing. I, I do wonder, it seems that many of you from a theater background or any of you dancers or from a dance background? I have a dance background. Hi, sorry, I just joined. Yeah, hi. <laughs> Emma. Great. Emma, hi Emma, I'm Carla Mann, I teach in the dance department. Well, um, someone from the theater department is gonna be joining us too, but um, while he's on his way, I'll tell, I'll tell Emma and whoever else might be interested a bit about the dance department. Um, we are a um, small but mighty department of three faculty members and several staff instructors and musicians. We, um, teach courses both on the dance studio side, which is um, I think what most people imagine dance classes are like. So that includes dance technique, improvisation, performance, choreography. And we teach courses on the dance study side too, which are different topics in dance history, dance cultural studies, dance ethnography. Um, my colleague has a, a, a new course, Dancing Latinx. Um, so, so we teach courses kind of on both sides of that spectrum, but all our courses combine in one ratio or another, some sorts of studio or moving activities with, um, with readings and viewings and discussions so that, uh, so that in any course you get a, you get more than one approach to the topic and more than one approach to understanding what you're doing in the course in kind of a broader context of what's going on in dance in the world. Um, uh, because we're a small department, um, that has pluses and minuses. The minuses are that we don't offer as many, especially dance technique courses in as many forms as as many levels as you would get, uh, for instance, in a conservatory. The benefits of a small department is that we know all of our students, whether they are majors or not majors, our students know one another. We're very um, uh, inclusive and supportive community in the dance department. Um, I think it allows for people to um, investigate what they are most interested in, both deeply and broadly. So for instance, um, we have seniors who have been dancing all four years, but who are majoring in other departments, but who've been highly involved up until quarantine in um, performance projects with us, but even now are creating performance projects online that we're putting up in, on our class Instagram page. Um, and then we also have uh, students who are, are um, dance majors, one who is a, uh, was a dance studies major, um, whose project uh, was on street dance in the Portland dance community and basically did a dance ethnography project um, in which she investigated street dance and had, very, had um, a number of interviews with um, interlocutors. She also created a dance performance 
um, based on what she found in terms of the way the street dance community operates. She tried to operate in that way with her cast to create a performance. And she also really wanted to give back to that community by hosting a dance battle at Reed. So, um, so that's one of the kinds of projects that our dance majors might do in their senior year. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I see Peter that you are here too. Hi. Hi, um, my name is Peter Cassander. I am a faculty member in the uh, theater department at Reed. Um, I'm one of four faculty uh, in, in the department. Um, the rest are all named Kate. Um, uh, we are, um, uh, we're a theater department in a small liberal arts college and we prepare, we, we think about theater from that point of view um uh as a department so what does that actually mean well it means we're not a conservatory as carlo was saying we're we're we're, we're cross disciplinary in all of our um both our coursework and our major requirements um and even how we think about the field um we're, we're not actually interested in a, a sort of uh, balkanized separated field we're more interested in a holistic approach to um the performing arts in general and in theater specifically in our in our department um we um yeah so we have we we too have majors we have a uh, uh and now a brand new minor that we have just in instituted in the last few weeks um we also have um both majors and a, a huge population of non-majors who, who participate in our in our work um both in our classwork and in our um productions um we go we that's just part of who we are and how, and how we function. Um, we, we run a production season, so we are both an academic department and a producing organization. Um, we have two main stage productions each year. The one in the fall is directed and designed by the faculty. Um, and then in the spring, the main stage is given over to the junior class. So one of the things we think is very important is that you get multiple opportunities to practice making theater. Um, as part of your education at Reed College um, in the theater department. We, we think about a unity of theory and practice. We do not separate them. Um, our classes that feel like they're um, very theory-based, uh, theater history, dramaturgy, um, community-based performance, very, very, our performance studies courses, all have a, an active practice inside of them. Um, and then our practice courses, acting, directing, design, have a bunch of theory built into them too. So we don't, we don't separate the two sides. We, we find it, one informs the other, and, and we are very interested in um, uh, embodied learning. How can we learn outside of our brains? Um, which is, is a, a kind of interesting counterpoint to the rest of the conversation going on at Reed. Um, what else can I tell you about who we are? Um, we, uh, our season not only has um, main stage shows, we also have thesis shows. So in our department, um, students in their final year who are working on their thesis um, will uh, engage sometimes with making work as part of that project. They, they, they ask a research question and part of the sort of investigation into that question involves making a show, designing, acting, performing, writing, uh, devising new work. Um, we then have a third level of production called the Read Independent Performance Project, which is a, a student curated series of performance uh, aimed both at majors to continue to explore and stretch what they're interested in, uh, and then aimed at uh, non-majors to just uh, uh, ramp up the amount of performance happening on campus. Um, and that crosses the RIP projects cross all kinds of interdisciplinary boundaries. There are some are music based, some are dance based, some are theater based. Peter, can you talk about maybe a performance production in theater that happened this year that you thought was particularly interesting or exciting or successful or or strange? <laughs> <laughs> what well, we we so this year's season? Let's see. What do, what do we make this year? We made an adaptation of Medea. That was the fall main stage and. Um, we, we looked at this Greek myth, we, went, we, we looked at it uh, in a number of different ways from another different directions and kind of created a in the round production of it. So we have 
We have three um, main theaters in the Performing Arts Building that we use, one of which we share with Dance, the Performance Lab. Um, and in our studio theater, our largest big black box space, we sat the audience um, in two rings, one on the balcony and one on the floor, and then painted a gold line to create a third ring. And the whole event took place inside this kind of little ring um, as we went about it. The, um, so that's one of the three things we've, we completed this year before we, before we had to sort of go on hiatus. Um, the, we had a, a senior thesis, which was actually a dance theater thesis, um, where a student was um, investigating uh, uh, rep uh, representations of queer intimacy uh, in film and television in the last decade, and then built a performance piece, a movement piece, out of their investigation. Our other thesis was a, a, a play, an, a site-specific play taking place in a classroom. Um, and then the junior production was going to be um, six plays written by a playwright named Eric N, exploring the lives of various saints um, in, uh, in the Catholic tradition. However, that production kind of got put on a hold. We couldn't finish it. We couldn't tech it. We had built most of it and rehearsed most of it, but then, then we had to stop. So, um, so was what we asked, what do we do? What do we do next? And, and so I actually was meeting with them just a little while ago. The, the, the group of students who are involved in that are now making um, a recreation of the War of the Worlds broadcast from 1938, um, which was this adaptation of a science fiction story named the same thing, War of the Worlds, um, that caused um, huge amounts of commotion. People thought aliens had actually landed in New Jersey in 1938. Um, so we're recreating that broadcast, and that will be how we sort of wrap up our semester. Peter, sorry, I'm going to yeah. pester you with a couple more questions. Oh, no, I love Can it. I love talk it. a little bit about um, your work at, in theater, your, your work as an artist and scholar in theater, and maybe yeah. um, some of what your colleagues in theater do? Great. Well, thank you. That's a, that's a great question. So I, I'm a stage designer. I, um, I'm a set and lighting designer primarily, though I do a little bit of video and sound design work as well. Um, I work all over the place. I work around the world, but, but primarily in Portland right now. Um, uh, I am interested in space and time and how humans inhabit them. Um, so how do we, how do we, how do we be, how, how does the world around us affect what we do? So I'm, inter I'm interested in that. And so, so that's kind of how, where I approach all of my design projects from um, recent projects that were, were kind of were super exciting were was um, I was in Venice a couple of summers ago um, making the Merchant of uh, on locate effectively on location. We were working with the Jewish community um, in Venice to 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 stage this play, which is a really complicated play, um, and and finding a way to to speak speak really interesting truth out of the play and, and really find some depth in it that, that I had always found missing from the play previously. It was very exciting. Um, uh, it was a logistical adventure in that like the lights had to arrive by boat because everything arrives by boat in Venice. Um, that's probably the most exciting and weird thing I've made recently. Um, my colleagues, um, Kate Duffley is a um, director and performance, scholars, uh, performance studies scholar um, who is very interested in community-based performance um, and who is on sabbatical at this moment, but will be back next year. Um, she is um, spending her sabbatical year sort of learning new performance techniques and directing shows and um, continuing to just deepen her practice, um, exploring how race works in the American theater. Um, uh, my colleague Kate Bredesen um, is a, a theater historian um, who explores the theater riot. Her, her main writing is on the um, uh, theater riots in 1968 in Paris. Um, and so she explores mid to late 20th century theater primarily, um, both, both in France and in North America. Um, and then Caitlin Chisick is our visiting faculty member in costume design, um, who's very much interested in how identity is expressed through clothing. 
um, and is with us next this year and next year. Um, and it's been really exciting to have have her with us. Um, so there's there's this a sort of rotation in the faculty sometimes of bringing in new energy, exciting energy um, with visitors while other people are on leave. So it's been really fun. Have you, have you described your colleagues? Can I return the question to you? Um, I have not described right. my colleagues and, and I realize that I should. So um, my colleague Victoria Fortuna is also a performance studies and dance studies scholar. Her work uh, is primarily focused in Argentina on contemporary dance there and also contemporary dance through um, Argentina's recent and not so recent histories of violence. Uh, uh, Victoria is also uh, very interested both in Argentina and here on in um, community-based dance projects. She teaches a course every year in community dance um, in which um, the participants uh, study different approaches to um, creating dance for and with different constituencies. Um, and then about the third week in the semester, every, one evening a week, they invite people from anywhere in Portland to come and work with them. And so they create, you know, one evening a week, a work with this big community group that they've amassed. Um, my colleague, Min Tron, um, is uh, a contemporary choreographer and performer, but also um, specializes in Southeast Asian dance, both traditional Southeast Asian dance and contemporary Southeast Asian dance. He's originally from Vietnam um, and lived in Vietnam um, under a series of uh, um, invasions and so as a child learned many different people's forms of dances as his country was invaded over and over um, and but continues to travel back to various places in Southeast Asia to study and work with um, different companies and you know both kind of traditional dance masters and more contemporary companies um, and his work is very influenced in that way. We also have a, um, a, a wonderful roster of um, Portland artists who teach dance tech, other dance techniques classes. So um, Vanessa Thiessen is a former member of Oregon Ballet Theater, a former soloist with them. She lives in Portland, but she also travels frequently to San Francisco to choreograph for a company called Post Ballet um, and to work, yeah, mostly she works with Post Ballet now. Um, Alex Krebs is our, teaches our um, tango class. He's actually sort of an internationally renowned tango teacher who happens to be a reedy and who happens to have settled in Portland. Um, and so he runs his own tango studio here, but also comes to read to teach. Um, we have two different hip hop teachers, DJ Rayleigh, who teaches especially introductory his, uh, hip hop all over town and Kimba Shannon, who works both at Reed and um, with Beaverton Public Schools. Um, and then, uh, oh, and then um, Donna Ofinger teaches our Afro-Cuban and Afro-Brazilian um, dance classes. Donna also runs her own dance studio called Center Space. So, yeah. Well, and then we've, we've got, um, now you make me think about our other, our, the other parts of our department, um, which include, we have, we have two shop staff members who, who, run, who run our shop. So we have Rusty Tennant, who is our technical director, um, who runs a theater company in town. He's also a director and actor and designer, actually. Um, he runs a theater company called Fuse Ensemble uh, here, here in Portland. Um, and then Alisa Warren runs our costume shop. So we're... we're we kind of that's our kind of our production unit and and the six of us sort of make up uh the department and the sort of producers in the department so students can uh get jobs in our department working in those shops so so if you're interested in in, in the tech side of of theater production there, there's a great way to sort of hang out, learn some skills, and, and, and make a little bit of money on the side while, while, while being at Reed. And, and even if you're not interested in majoring, we, lots of people are non-majors who are working in our shops, um, uh, both costume and, and in the sets shop. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot to, just to mention, I, I, also, <laughs> I also teach. And um, I'm, I'm primarily a contemporary choreographer. I um, make 
dances for stage, especially when I'm commissioned by dance companies to make a piece for them. Um, but I'm also very interested in dance for specific sites and dance for film and video and for um, installation. Um, and I found that background especially useful in the past month um, and have kind of changed the um, composition of my syllabi to, to draw on these skills that, that we need right now, um, working in the specific sites that we happen to be in and sharing things over film and video. Um, so, so one of the things that happens in Portland um, is uh, we have we have a great connection to the local community, as 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 the examples of our or both our staff and our and our and our um, the dance instructors are. We're, we're both departments are, are highly connected to what's going on in the in the local community, um, and we take our students out to see work all the time. Um, we have a great festival in town called the Time Based Art Festival run by the Portland Institute of Contemporary Art, and we partner with them sometimes to bring work both into the building and to take students to see that work. Um, it's for two weeks, right at the beginning of the school year. We wish we could cancel classes and just go to that instead, but um, uh, we can't. So we try, to, we try to get out and see as much as we can. Um, almost everybody's working locally, or we're all working artists. Um, and um, yeah, what else, what else? Yeah, yeah. And in addition to taking students to see things, we bring in visiting artists to our departments as well, Br visiting artists and visiting scholars. Um, in dance, we've been lucky to have a, um, a fund that allows us to run an intensive uh, kind of, I don't know, five day um, residency with a visiting company. And again, with those kind of close ties to the Portland community, we partner often with a, a dance presenting organization, White Bird Dance, who brings companies um, internationally. Um, and so we kind of piggyback on that and keep them here for another five days at Reed to work with us and our students. And so that's been really exciting. So this past year, we had um, Reggie Wilson's Fist and Heel Performance Group. They're based in um, Brooklyn, um, working with us. Um, both Reggie and four of his company members were around. And so it's a, uh, it's a really great opportunity, not only to dive into the work of a specific artist, but I think for to, to having other company members there and, and just eating lunch together, also having these kind of informal opportunities to interact. Um, students get a chance to really get to know what these artists' lives are like and to make those kinds of connections. And I think that that's really valuable too. Cool. So uh, um, a question about uh, um, uh, improv in theater courses. So we have, we have taught an improv course in the past. Right now, we're, we're not teaching improv, um, mostly because none of us are currently in the current um, faculty are trained in it. However, it comes up a lot. We're, we're, we're very interested in, um, uh, uh, well, improv-based performance style. So we're not, we're not teaching improv as improv, but but improv as a um, as a way to generate new work. So it comes up in the devising class. It comes up in um, our, our movement, our acting and movement course. Um, there's a number of uh, improv-based improv groups on campus among the student activities, um, and they're often um, uh, run by by theater majors. Um, also a question about uh, um, playwriting. We, we, ha we hold a playwriting course we offer probably every other year. Um, student theses are often in playwriting. Um, uh, it's a kind of a natural fit for the theater department um, or for Reed College to have a lot of playwrights around. Um, creative writing is, is a major thing on campus across the, the college, um, both, both in the creative writing program, but, but just people are interested in the word and how to express themselves. That's a, that's a, a, a a thing that's important to readies, I find. Um, so we have a lot. Of, we have a lot of playwriting theses in the end, um, and that is one of the forms that a, that a thesis in the theater department can take. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I'll just piggyback a little bit on that. We do have an improvisation course that I teach every year in the dance department, and I have a lot of theater majors who come to that course. I think that there's a lot of crossover there that they find that's useful to them. Yeah. We, we um, the question, oh, Shakespeare. Shakespeare is always an interesting question. I, I'm probably the biggest Shakespeare champion in the department. 
and I'm also seen as the experimental theater guy in the department simultaneously. Um, so how do we how do we think about Shakespeare? Well, we think about it as um, some really great and strange plays to explore um, inside the inside the canon, inside inside theater performance. So we're I guess we're always asking, what does it mean to be making theater in the 21st century? What does it mean to be making performance um, right now? And that's become an even more urgent question, I feel, in the last couple of weeks. But, but um, what does it mean to gather in a room together once we can gather in rooms together again? Um, uh, and, and why is that different than other forms of... of um, cultural production or, or, or engagement? Why, why is, how is this experience we're having right now with these strange boxes, these glowing screens, different from if we could, could be sitting in a room together right now? How, that, the tension between those two things this is one of the things the department is very interested in exploring. Why are we doing this now? How is it vital? Um, and, and I think that's how we would approach Shakespeare. How is it vital? And if, if, if that makes it, if that means to be vital in that moment that we're making a, a, a Shakespeare that, that feels Elizabethan in costume, Elizabethan in form, fantastic. Or if we're doing it in street clothes, um, also fantastic. It's just, it's, it's really about the necessary communication of the moment. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm talking a bunch. No, that's good. Yeah, that's good. We, we are getting some questions coming in, and um, I will uh, I'll, I'll try to get through as many as I can. But um, one, one great question is, Mirren is asking about the theater department and, and potentially dance department uh, and, and internships associated with both of your departments. Um, and I'll just spin that off to include maybe a little bit of, if you both want to chat about uh, what some of your majors, what some of your students have, have done after graduation, some you know, dance companies or any other um, opportunities they've had. Peter, do you want to start? Sure, sure. Um, uh, so the, the department has connection to the um, Portland Experimental Theater Ensemble. I, I happen to be a, a, an associate member of the company. They run a um, performance training program that we've had uh, alumni go through. Um, we, have, we are connected to the one year lease program that takes place in Greece every summer. Um, there's a lot of internship stuff that happens over summers um, that our students have engaged in. Um, we also do, um, we've had real success with some of the um, exchange programs, um, both with the Moscow Art Theater and the British Academy of uh, Drama. Um, uh, our alum go on to do all kinds of things. Um, I, I'm, I'm particularly proud of the EMT and the, um, the preschool teacher. Those are two of my favorites. Um, some end up in grad school. Um, we, we, our probably biggest name alum are all playwrights um, from, a, from a point of view, from a sort of national point of view. Uh, Anne Washburn uh, is an alum of Reed College. Um, Eric Overmeyer, um, so several other kind of big name playwrights went through Reed College at one point or another. Um, uh, one of my students, uh, Alex Swan, left Reed and ended up in the electrics department on Hamilton. Um, and having already gotten to Broadway by, by just after leaving Reed, um, has now moved on to politics. So there's, that's a thing. Um, what else? Yeah, we have, a, we have a student, an alum who's in grads in the grad program at CalArts right now. We have um, a number of just people all over the place doing all kinds of things. It's, it's really quite exciting. It's, um, I guess, just to loop back quickly for a second, um, um, the, 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 that, that idea that we're teaching theater from a liberal arts point of view in a liberal arts college um, plays through. We see theater as a lens to explore what whatever explore human interaction, human behavior, human existence. And we use theater as the lens to do that versus a different department, um, physics, sociology, anthropology, dance, music, etc., cetera, um, which are different lenses to explore the same thing. We just, we've picked theater, whatever that means, as ours. And that's where we explore. 
Yeah, and maybe kind of just to, uh, in some, I think, think the experience for our dance majors and also for students who are serious about dance, who aren't necessarily majors, is similar to the, it's similar to what Peter has been talking about. So, um, so in terms of internships, for our students, they do a lot of internships during the summer, um, and they range from some kind of arts administration. Um, they also uh, do internships in um, uh, 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 company management. Sometimes uh, they do uh, internships as scholars. There, uh, two years ago, we had a student who is working with a choreographer who is making a piece about. Um, based on the AIDS crisis in the 80s and was doing a lot of archival research for the choreographer. Um, we have students, dance students who intern as in lighting design and in costume design um, because they're interested in those aspects of performance too. Um, and as far as alums, we have alums who do maybe what you just sort of expect in dance who are uh, they dance with companies or they're choreographers of their own companies. They're in grad school in dance. Um, uh, there's a student in New York and she's creating work, but she's also created an online dance uh, magazine uh, and accepts submissions for all over. So you're free to submit to her, ma her online magazine as well. Um, we also have um, dance alums. One right now is in medical school. Um, I, I just recently talked to an uh, alum who, who took many, many dance courses, but was a chemistry major, um, but who is primarily now working as a public speaker and saying, uh, and also took theater courses and telling me how much dance and theater have really contributed to what she's doing now. Um, but she's, which she's very successful at, despite having been a chemistry major and not feeling that she's using her chemistry um, education all that much, though I'm sure there's all kinds of problem solving skills and research skills that she actually is using that it, you know, maybe don't seem as sort of directly at hand to her. Um, yeah, so I think really uh, stu what students do run the gamut. I, I find that um, a lot of Reed students I think one of the things Reed helps prepare people is to um, strike out on their own path to decide what it is they want to do, as opposed to necessarily just taking a path that seems perhaps open to them. So again, I'm thinking about an alum who started a dance school in her town um, and basically started a whole program for, for kids and parents to dance together that's highly successful. And she teaches this program um, all over. Another dance alum who received a Watson Fellowship, which is a, um, I forget how much money they, it, uh, mm -hmm. the Watson um, uh, provides now, but if you are a senior in college, you can apply for a grant to travel and study for the whole year after you graduate. It's something like twenty thousand um, dollars. And so this student um, investigated a particular kind of dance improvisation in many different countries in the world, but then developed a whole new movement form um, that uh, a therapeutic movement form that he was using from it that he again has taught to many people. So I think there's just a lot of different things that you could do no matter what you decide you, exactly you're going to do at Reed because again you're in a liberal arts environment that allows you to uh, to investigate a lot of fields and and figure out both sort of what maybe you're most interested in but ways of asking questions, ways of finding out how to move within these and other fields that might apply towards other things you want to do with your life. Yeah. Um, so we're getting another, thank you both, that's great. Um, we are getting another, related to Shakespeare, lots of Shakespeare enthusiasts in this, in this group here, super exciting. Um, and Molly is asking, congratulations Molly, from uh, admitted student from, from Wyoming. Do you do any collaboration with the Shakespeare Festival in Ashland, Oregon? We we would like to, 
Um, uh, we, we, were, well, we were planning on, there was, there was a sort of plan to take a group of students down over spring break, but that kind of fell apart given where we are. Um, the new artistic director there, uh, Nataki Garrett, is an old friend of mine. Um, I went to grad school with her and she's now running, running the Shakespeare Festival. So the hope is that in the, in the near future, we'll be doing more with them um, as, soon as, as soon as they get back up and running, uh, hopefully next summer. So, so yeah, so we were, we're connected to them, but we, it's, it's a little farther away than, um, um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a drive, but, but it's, it's good. So. No. Um, this, is a, this is a question that I'm sure is on the minds of, of many folks, whether they're interested in uh, theater or dance as a major or non-major. Um, Leandra is asking us, how much opportunity is there for non-theater majors to be involved in performances? Uh, and is that, is that, I love this part, is it realistic to plan on doing that or is it one of those things that's possible but not actually pretty difficult or unlikely to do? Oh, it happens all the time, all the time. I mean, it's hard, okay, so biochem and theater, a little rough. That's, that, that's a lot, but the biochemistry is pretty intense. Um, but I, I, was, I actually was meeting with a student today who's gonna be a um, psychology major uh, and is super excited about lighting design and is finding time to do both those things, no problem. Um, there is a econ major who effectively double majored, took almost every course in theater, um, but finished an econ degree and went off to, to do that. He was, he, uh, I think was in six main stages, so six of the eight semesters, was involved in a, in a main stage or a thesis project, um, worked in the shop, took most of the theater classes, but, but, but finished an econ degree. So there's, it, it absolutely happens. There's lots of opportunity. We, our casting is open to everyone, um, all, everyone who, all comers. We want, we want everybody. Um, uh, and, and we really do want to include people outside the department. Some of the most amazing theater in my career has been made um, was, was before I was at Reed and was working at MIT with MIT students very few of whom major in theater. But, but to see the way that um, someone come bringing ideas from other areas into the room is so exciting. And we see the same thing at Reed, just bringing new ideas, bringing different ideas, cross-disciplinary, um, knocking down the boundaries. These disciplinary boundaries are, are, are helpful for focus, but, but, but that's, that's how I see them as useful, as I said before, as a lens to focus through but it's all the same investigation. Um, it's, a, it's, it's really exciting to me. So, so yes, absolutely possible. It's a little harder with some of the heavy sciences. That's all. Yeah, and I just say, same for dance. 90% of people involved in our productions are not dance majors. And, and depending on the course, you know, 80 to 95% of somebody in a, in, of students in a dance course are not dance majors. Can you, can you both talk a little bit about how your, your students, your majors, sort of build community with, with themselves? I mean, you, you've done such a great job kind of laying out the opportunities and the academic offerings. Um, you know, of course, part of what we offer at Reed is, is that intimate kind of experience as well. So how, how do they kind of build community maybe with you or, or among each other? Well, I can talk about the, the dance students. Um, and again, I think this is one benefit of being a small department. For one thing, the dancers all want to know all the other dancers because you want people to work with, you want people to collaborate with. Um, and in courses, there's a, a, a lot of back and forth um, in terms both of collaboration and in terms of giving kind of feedback or responding to one another's work. Um, we also have a, com a completely student organized, student run dance troupe. They, they meet every weekend, they choreograph their own pieces. All people are welcome to dance troupe. They don't, you know, they don't want to exclude anybody. Um, there's also a, a, a kind of really supportive uh, community among the dance majors. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, so it so it read there is this senior thesis project that people do and before you um, advance to that project there's a junior qualifying exam that you take in your discipline and our dance seniors wait 
while all the dance juniors are getting their the feedback on their dance qualifying exam and they have tea and they have blankets and they have little you know either you know those little like oh, things that you blow or confetti or something and so you know they're they're there to sort of celebrate and welcome them and no one has yet failed their call but i'm sure that they would be there with tissues you know just in case um so there's that kind of real sort of familial feeling um, among the dancers and I think just a deep, a, a very deep understanding both that they need um, to support, not just to support one another in their work, but they're generally interested in one another's work and one another's ideas. They're, and because people come with different dance backgrounds and different kinds of experience, they're also interested in someone else's experience who might be very different from theirs and learning from their peers as well as from you know, this relatively small faculty that we have, um, as well as just being deeply um, caring about their fellow dance students as people. We're, we're, we're similar, we're a small department. And, and one of the things that, um, again, as Carla said, is it happens in small departments is, is people just get to know each other. You're all in the same classes together. Um, part of the work of, of making theater is creating temporary communities, and we, we just in the in the production team in the in the cast and crew of a show we create community several times a semester, and then and they linger and they drift and they come back together and and, and the same community kind of continues down as time goes on. Um, our our juniors do this sort of a similar thing. We we, we have asked them all to become a production team, a core, um, and then they, they do produce a play together. They really struggle through um, what the important issues, the big issues around making this play. Um, it's difficult. It's partially a class in learning collaboration. Um, how, do you, how do we have ideas together? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a complicated thing to do. Um, but once they've done that, well, after they get out of that, they become the seniors and they, then they're sort of responsible to each other. Um, and they see each other's work and they help develop each other's work and, and, and go forward from there. And, and uh, other students sort of see them and, and join in that. There's, there's definitely a, a supportive community among, among the theater department. Um, and there's a great synergy among actually all three departments in the performing arts in that we have this great building that we share and, and people just hang out. There's some great furniture in the lobby, <laughs> um, the red poofs, and just people just hang out there and you see them and people, you, you just see the same faces and get to know them. And it's a really lovely um, atmosphere inside the building. It's really fun. Thank you, thank you. And, um, one last question, and then we'll we'll um, we'll we'll wrap up. And like I said, if we didn't get to anything, we we will definitely let you know. Get, reach out to us, and and we certainly will get in touch. Um, but uh, Leandra is wondering. You both have mentioned kind of the the small size of your departments. Um, approximately, how many students are are majoring in dance or theater in in a given year? Um, so we have it changes, um, and it read you don't declare a major until you're halfway done. And so it's, it's always hard to say who's a, going to be a major in the first two years. So we're always, we're always guessing at that. Um, this year we have four seniors. Next year we will have six. Um, so that's 10 and we'll multiply that. There's probably 20 people involved in, in the theater department. That seems like a, a, a general major. And that's majors. That's not non-majors, minors, people working in the shop, people doing other things. Yeah. And we similarly, we, ha we have usually three or four seniors in the department in most years, and usually about a dozen students between first and fourth year that we're pretty sure are dance majors. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Gosh, gosh, well, thank you. Thank you all for joining us and uh, for asking such great questions and, and spending some time. Um, we, you know, I know, again, this, we, we, we love getting to know you and relish any opportunity to connect in, in any kind of format. Uh, and I just, I want to, I want to share with you, especially for the admitted students in here, uh, as, as you're weighing your options and you're making decisions, I think a lot of what uh, Carla and Peter have mentioned about the, the kind of work that, that we do at Reed and the spirit of inquiry that 
the kind of community that, that you, you would be joining here. Um, I hope you'll, you'll layer that on to, uh, to your decision making when it comes to, to choosing a college. And of course, if we can help in any way with that, if there's any other questions that we can answer for you, uh, don't, don't hesitate to get in touch. But thank you again for your time, for joining us. Um, it's been a delight to see you in these little, little boxes and, and one day, hopefully soon, sooner than later, to, to see you all in person. So thank you again. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, stay home and stay safe. Thank you, professors, for, for your time today. Thank you. Thanks so much. Nice to see your lovely faces. <laughs>